With the announcement of Battlefield 1, I'd like to take you guys back to 1914 through to 1918 as we look at some of the weird weapons and inventions that were created during the First World War. Now remember, if it looks stupid, but it works, then it isn't stupid, but it can still look stupid. One of the wildly used inventions in World War One was the periscope. The periscope is basically a series of two or more mirrors which are used to look over something without having to expose yourself. For example, you would use it to peek over the tops of trenches. This led to someone inventing a periscope rifle. This was used in a similar manner, except you'd be able to fire over the top of trenches. As you can see here, it's basically a novelty of the war. It allowed the soldiers to shoot without ever having to expose themselves, which I wouldn't be complaining about if it was me on the front lines, I'd never want to have to stick my head over the top of a trench. I really doubt they'd put this weapon in Battlefield 1, however if they did, it'd be interesting to see if you were able to shoot the periscope rifle, it would completely break it and the enemy player would not be able to use his primary weapon. And since most people in World War 1 didn't carry pistols, only the officers really carried pistols, you would be pretty buggered if your primary weapon broke, and for this reason I would really doubt seeing this weapon, or this attachment to a weapon rifle, in Battlefield 1. In the trailer we see them using a spiked club and also an entrenching tool. They've mentioned that each of these weapons or the different melee weapons will have their own unique abilities that'll make them different. For me, this gives a sense that the trench club will have say like a faster attack speed or something like possibly the entrenching tool you may be able to dig with. It'd be interesting to see them take that evolution step to the next level so that'd be quite a cool possibility to see if it is in the game. I know that currently in Battlefield you're able to blow the ground in and create delves and kind of like dips in the ground which if you're inside of them tanks can go over the top of you and completely pass you without killing you. And they have been experimenting with the amount of depth that you can do with these in previous games so maybe they've finally nailed it and they're able to create destructible terrain in the sense of the ground being destroyed and creating like these holes that you can hide in. Here you can see one of the British batons that were used during World War I as well as the comparison to that, which would be the German baton that they used. You can see this has a much more planar, if what somewhat BDSM style look to it. And here's a very rustic looking mace. There was a lot of improvised weapons in World War One. The majority of them all look different as people would be carving them out of their own wood, maybe sat in the trenches carving their own weapons of war. You can see flip knives and maces and also you might be more familiar with the US Army M1918 trench knife. And here's where it gets a little bit stranger. We have this brass knuckle style weapon with an attachable knife to it. So you basically punch victims to death. And even weirder than that, we have this kind of metallic glove that would be used. I guess this is to protect your arm so you can kind of punch away at people and go ham. It'd even be quite funny to be able to run these akimbo, so you'd have one in each hand and you could just kind of run through Skyrim style, just solo punching everybody that you see. Throughout World War I, we saw the heavy use of artillery. This was used to fire shells at things such as tanks, and key objectives like buildings and planes and airfields, as well as to launch gas canisters into the enemy lines. You have the big artillery devices and also the smaller scale ones like the invention of mortars which were used to also fire gas canisters which were more portable to carry. While there were a lot of gas masks invented, this one caught my eye because it reminded me of that doctor dude from the Muppets, which you can see here. It kind of looks very similar I think. In order to clear out the gas they'd use these giant fans and also some of the vehicles that you'll see had these like big fans on the back of them which would be used to clear out all of the dust that's left over. To locate the artillery, they created these audio-visual apparatus, which was intended to find the boom and flash of the enemy artillery. You can see this is like a bicycle, a dual bicycle system, which carries four of the audio equipments. And then we have this Mickey Mouse looking pair, which have these very goofy looking helmets. I wonder if this will be some of the customizable headwear that you'll see in Battlefield 1. I really doubt it, but it'd be very hilarious to see it maybe unlocked at the later ranks. Another way of spotting enemy artillery was through a reconnaissance limbo pole, which you would basically have somebody pushing along, holding in place while the other guy would be up on the top of it trying to spot key targets or enemy artillery positions or places for them to artillery themselves. 
This would be quite funny to see in Battlefield because you'd have like your mate pushing it along and then holding it in place while you're like looking around and calling down artillery strikes. We get to find out how exactly the artillery will work but this would be very like interesting to see I think. For anti-tank purposes they could have something like the revolver cannon which was used to fire shells. It's basically like the old wild west style wind up guns you basically crank the handle and it'd fire like a revolver at the same time. For protection, a lot of the soldiers that were on stationary targets, such as port out, well, watch posts basically, and uh, some of the officers would be wearing body armor. You can see here is like a typical example of body armor. And I'm not sure if it's just me having like a Batman vs Superman moment here, but does this dude look like this dude? We even had Castle Crashes cosplayers as well, or perhaps Prez the Sun cosplayers back in World War One as well, as uh, Postman Pat enthusiasts. See here, oh, basically full plate, sheets of metal, really crudely put together. The field medics might have things like this, which is basically like a metallic uh, trolley which they push along and it has a stretcher in the inside of it. And then that would allow them to basically cross some dangerous terrain, not be shot at, and also recover, say like officers or uh, other wounded soldiers and bring them back with them safely. I think this would actually be pretty cool to see in Battlefield, uh, just like slowly moving along uh, and using it for cover. And you could also use it basically as a mobile wall, which would really change up the gameplay. One version I wouldn't want to see, however, would be something like this version, which is basically a shielded post for a sniper that you can wheel along and you can basically use it to shoot without ever being hit. Because you'd probably see everybody using them basically, it'd be the same as the, the uh, periscope rifle that was there shown earlier at the beginning. For full squads they had things like these basically siege walls, some of them would be stationary but there was also a variation that you could kind of push along which reminds me of some kind of medieval siege machine. These look quite cool but I don't really think they'd be useful in battlefields. I mean you'd probably see people using them to block off spawns <laughs> so I don't think these would be in the game. You might see the stationary version though, uh, like say around the outside of a base. Next up we are starting on all the vehicles and transportation. So the first thing we have is the bicycle. The bicycle was primarily used for reconning. You could cross areas a lot quicker than you usually would. However it was adopted by various battalions, for example the Kent Cyclist Battalion in 1915 used the bicycles to cross large bits of terrain very quickly and I'm guessing that this helped them to basically get the surprise on enemies and to move up considerably quicker than you usually would be able to. I'm pretty sure though this saw limited use in the war. It'd be quite funny to see in Battlefield you just see people kind of riding along maybe even ringing the bells on the bikes if they do have them and you just see like 64 guys charging you down against 64 guys on horses that'd be quite funny to see. Um, there was also a French cyclist battalion, which you can see here as well. So overall, this looks like quite a funny thing, so I wouldn't be surprised if you did see it in. They have had bikes in the Battlefield game, so maybe this will be the new equivalent of the dirt bike. Now we'll move on to some of the heavier vehicles, so we'll be looking at the tanks and transports that they used in World War I. So this is a typical example of a troop transport, which is basically a really, really old looking car, as it was in World War I with big steel plates along the sides or iron or whatever the hell they used back then but you can see he's like a slightly smaller personal vehicle which you might see like in a squad and then they had these bikes as well which had the buggies on the side which had mounted machine guns they came in lots of different designs basically each one seemed to be different and you get really weird looking vehicles I'm not sure if this is a, meant to be a dummy tank or if it was in fact like a little mini tank that they built and the larger vehicles like these big troop transports again that you get with like the really basically bolted on metal onto the sides of the vehicle. Some of the vehicles had fans on the back. I'm not sure if that was meant to be able to blow up a dust storm or if that was actually how it propelled itself. And then you get like this one which looks like a really high profile car. This is probably one of the baller ones, <laughs> like more baller anyway. And but yeah, like I said, a lot of it was basically chop shop work. They just stuck big metal panels on everything that they could get. This is like a trike thing which kind of reminds me of a Robin Reliant uh, so I'm not sure how easily it tipped over but it did pull off a mean wheelie. I mean look at that, imagine seeing that in Battlefield hurtling towards you. 
or in fact this, I would pretty much probably roll down and be like, I want to join your side, mate, because <laughs> look how stylish that looks. <laughs> Yo, man, he looks like so hot. He looks so chuffed. He's like, yeah, I am a player. <laughs> das ist gut, ja. For traversing the streams and rivers, you might see people using stilts. Which I really doubt you'd see in Battlefield. I don't think they'd be able to do it in the engine, really. I just imagine people like using them on land. Um, but they also invented things like these little boats, which you kind of stand up in and you shoot from a firing position, which look very, very strange. You might see these floating down the river, like for single person carriers. And they have like these ones, which are basically like shoes, which look like two submarine or trash bags strapped to his feet. This would, you have to admit, it would be pretty interesting to see like people gunning it out on the rivers in battlefield like this, trying to cross them. That'd be quite hilarious. So that's it for the video. Once again, I am Wintergore. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It really does help me out. And also leave a comment if there's anything you know about that you think I might find interesting or the other readers might find interesting. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.